Danny. We are live here with Hollywood Gatekeepers, Carolyn J. Carpenter here, live both on YouTube and on Facebook. Very fancy and very exciting. Make sure that I'm in the right place. And um, today we are going to talk about writing your story. Hmm. What could that mean, I wonder? Writing your story. Hmm. So we're really excited to be here today. We're excited every time that we're here. And we love that we're so fancy that we are doing both um, Facebook and YouTube. So you can leave a comment. We will be answering the Facebook Live comments as we go. Um, hi, Doug. My fearless partner is here. If um, you're on YouTube, you can leave a comment below and we will get back to you in those because I can't switch back and forth because there's only one of me and I'm not very... You don't want that. <laughs> so today, I have notes, I have notes, copious notes. Uh, we are going to be talking about writing your story because you're writers. If you're with us, you're a writer. Even if you don't write screenplays, even if you just dream of writing screenplays, even if you don't want to even write a screenplay, um, readers are writers. Readers have to know how to write. Um, they need to be able to analyze screenplays. And one of the things that we often do is take, um, hey, Doug, is we take writers through the process. Uh, I mean, readers through the process of writing a screenplay so that you know what it's like to face that blank page. So um, writing your story. Yeah, there. He said it. He said it. So it's official now. Uh, so we want to kind of inspire you as readers. Um, you are writers. So if you are someone who wants to be a reader, own the fact that you're a writer, live it. Hi, Elaine. Own it do it. You are a writer if you are a reader. I harp about that all the time because if you're a reader, you have to be able to take a screenplay and then write coverage, which is kind of like a book report. And you have to be able to summarize that screenplay and get it across. You want to capture the tone. You want the, the producer that's reading your coverage. Hey, Gaynor. Hello. Glad to be a part of this too. So glad to have you here. So you have to be part of, you know, you have to be able to, to write and take a screenplay and uh, reframe it so a producer knows what this is about and can get it across. And then you have to be able to succinctly write what works and doesn't work about that screenplay. So you're a writer. Everyone here, we're all writers. Own it. That's what we are. People ask my emoji. Pretty good, huh? So that's what I should do. We're going to do, we're going to do pictures tomorrow. Um, so I should do all the emojis. <laughs> okay. Just make me want to do the emojis. Okay, sorry. Off she goes. Hold her back in. Okay, so that was my sound effect. No, now I'm Popeye. All right, so writing your story, shall we? Shall we? So what we thought we'd do is we kind of take you through steps about writing stories because that's what we do, right? That's what writers do. We tell stories. And so as a reader, well, a couple of things you want to be able to work with a writer and you want to get them to tell the very best story that you can. As a reader, you are responsible for finding the story. That is your deal. You are all about the story. You you need to know about marketing, budgeting, all the things that go into milk, milk faking. Wow. <laughs> oh, scroll, scroll. Yay, Ontario. Yay. Gonna go to Montreal soon. Do all the emojis. I think we should. <laughs> there she is. There he is. Hi, Vicky. What's up, man? Hey, Brenda. Oh, we got some. Yay. Screeners coming back in the fold. Hey, Shri. Yippee. So everybody hi, say, say hi to Shri. She's the one welcoming you. Entering. Entrez-vous. Entre I've been listening to Hamilton. Okay, so I'm not going to go there. Um, so um, it is your responsibility to be all about the story. You need to know about marketing and be able to know kind of the things that go into it. But really... Producers rely on you because sometimes they're all over the place about everything. Casting, marketing, they're like, they're spinning plates. <laughs> That's what I always call them, the plate spinners. <laughs> That's what producers are, running around. We have a producer that tells a really great story. Well, I don't want to tell it because he's going to come on and tell it. He just hasn't come on yet. A really great story about combining craft services with street cleaning. Anyway, um, yeah. So producers are amazing. So it is your job to stick to the story because sometimes they'll go off on these tangents like, we're going to move it to Russia. Let's go film in Alaska. And then they turn to you and say, is this going to help the story? And you're the one that just goes, you, you don't, all that noise is just noise to you. You stick with the story. So, Wushi, good to see it. Yay. Yay. Screen readers galore. Oh, good. See, Elaine, we're on it. <laughs> We have so much going on. We do. Heidi ho, Heidi ho. So um, thank you. I said to say hello, and you did. Thank you, Gaynor, for saying hello to Sheree. Appreciate that. Um, so 
it's up to you to kind of stick that stick to that story. So every time that we are kind of, we always kind of go, well, threefold, but twofold for today, where we talk about readers, writers, and then being an entrepreneur. That's kind of the third one. We're not really going to talk too much about that today. But so anytime we talk about writing something, we're talking about it in kind of two elements. One is as a writer, if you write screenplays, we hope that it will help you write your screenplay. But also as a reader, the things that we're suggesting to you to make your screenplay better, we are also saying, use this, it's yours, take it away, put it in your own words, and repurpose it so that when you are working with a writer, you can use the things that we're telling you to tell them. <laughs> Free! <laughs> oh, my son used to do that on Healy's. Because <laughs> he's my boy. Um, so, uh, you know, we want you to be able to take everything... <laughs> Woo, okay. We want you to be able to take everything that we are kind of offering in terms of what makes a screenplay work well to help you as a writer and also help you look for those things when you are helping a reader, I mean, a writer. So hope that makes, Brenda's ready to roll. Love it, love it. Sailors Lake, Pennsylvania. I've never heard of that. Awesome. How's the weather there, Tommy? I love it, I love it that we're all over the place. It's so cool and it's evening for you too. Um, so, so a couple of things about telling story, you know, that, I mean, your kind of job as a reader, when you're working with production companies or you're working with you know, filmmakers and you're looking for projects. So sometimes the reader, you know, projects are coming through you, the producers are looking for it. It is up to you to find that gem. And sometimes the script can be a mess, but we want you to find the gem, even if it's, there's problems with the script you know, if there's a gem in there, it's up to you to find it. And you don't want to be the guy that goes, yeah, this doesn't work. And then someone else goes, Ooh, yeah, it's a mess, but check this out. And then, you know, takes off. So that's a big part of your job is finding that gem, regardless of kind of if there's issues in the script. And then you can kind of help move that forward. And one of the ways that you can do that is kind of by tapping into your own thing. And this this might seem kind of woo out there, whatever, but we really feel like this is going to be the thing that makes a difference in you and your ability to be a good reader. And that is your ability to tap into what's honest, to be able to tap into what's honest about that writer, what's honest about your coverage, what's honest about yourself in a way that is full of, uh, you know, truth, honesty, and compassion, really, of like being able to kind of see all of those things see the honesty in a story and see the things that are wrong with it and give an honest, you know, read of those things with ways of improving it and making it better. So we kind of wanted to talk about what are you looking for as a reader or what are you writing as a writer? And we have a whole section. We're going to give you a handout. Yay for handouts. So we're going to give you a handout. <laughs> so, so in the YouTube videos, I just learned this because we're always learning about how to do stuff get really smart and then we're passing it along to you. So I learned that in, in YouTube land, you can put a card, like a title card right in the middle of your video. And so you can be like, what we're giving you <laughs> and then it will freeze and I'll put a little graphic right there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be doing it. I'm totally Vanna Whiting, Brady. <laughs> so we don't need a photo session, Doug, we'll just use this video. Let's see, cause already if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see a bunch of these. Because that's me talking about opportunity ears. So when we talk about that quite a bit to put your opportunity ears on. And so you'll see a bunch of stills of that. So anyway, I just learned that. Did you know that? See what we're learning? All kinds of things. That's the entrepreneurial side that we try to teach you how to build your own business. And that, so things that we learn, we pass along. Oklahoma. Oh, I bet you love that, huh? Sorry. <laughs> Peggy. Peggy, I don't need your help. Thank you. It's gorgeous. Yay. I love the weather. That's gorgeous. Because <laughs> she said, time stop. Okay. I've done that show more than a few times. <laughs> Sorry. Belly Lori. <laughs> okay. So, uh, even in your own mess. That's a script, says Mickey. Absolutely. So, anyway. <laughs> it wasn't a prank. What well, wasn't a prank? And agreeable. <laughs> I like that name. That's awesome. Um, yay, Margarita, Naples, Florida, in the house. Love it, Margarita, no, Marquita, sorry, not Margarita. Sorry, I, don't know what, I was thinking it was a, 
<laughs> Please. I got it now. I'm on it. Stand in. So my show's over. I never got to go on all that work. So I've been an understudy, as you know. But oh my goodness, what an amazing. Hey, Doug. <laughs> We're not ready for that yet. What an amazing. Who's a member of the Elks Club? <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Focus in. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. So, yeah, um, it was an amazing experience doing the show, FYI. But anyway, it is your job to find those honest stories. And the more that you're sort of honest about <laughs> life, and <laughs> life can throw, oh, I've just recently had, someday I'll tell it, can't tell it yet, but just had the most experience ever, like one of those, and Doug and I say this on the, on the regular, but you can't write this stuff. Um, that's an emoji. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, but to find those, <laughs> see laughing faces going by, <laughs> at least it's not a mad face. Sometimes mad faces go by and I'm like, what, why are you mad? What are we doing? Okay. So anywho, um, you want to be able to find those honest stories because really what resonates, it doesn't matter if the story's on the moon, look at star Wars, you know, like <laughs> that's a pretty big story. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> laughing faces are cracking me up. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> But Star Wars is like a huge story, right? And yet the thing that we love about it, the thing that makes it resonate so much is that there's the smaller story within the story. It's honest. Um, the, the characters are honest, the family and, you know, do well. The times that you see someone at the Oscars, <laughs> two things about that is that typically it's because they came down to some kind of universal thing that everybody can relate to. And then the other thing comes down to is that person stands up there and goes, thank you, so-and-so. You were the one person that believed in my story, <laughs> right? I mean, how often do you see that? I don't know. What if you had read my story? That's you. That could be you that they're talking to. <laughs> you were the one. So it is like, I mean, but it makes, those are, you know, those go hand in hand in that someone with that writer found the honesty in their story and helped them propel it forward. That's our job. We are gatekeepers, not slam the gate shut. We are finding ways to propel it for it forward. Hi, Amanda from Georgia. One of my very best friends is moving to Georgia. So maybe I'll be there soon because we're going to visit often. But it's good. It must be time for margaritas. Maybe that's what it is. Margaritas on the mind. Can you get margaritas through Grubhub? Anyway, um, I don't think you can. It's cloudy. And it's always cloudy in Salem. What are you boohooing about? <laughs> you live there. <laughs> it's always the ever anything but that. Um, <laughs> awesome. So you want to find those honest stories because those are the stories that people will relate to, whether they're set on the moon or set in a living room. doesn't matter. And that's your job as a reader. So how do you do that? How do you find those honest stories? And we feel, we got a tip for you. <laughs> I love how, I, I don't feel like I'm alone because you're all here, but if any, you know, if you're flying the wall, it's like, damn, <laughs> she's just, woo. Um, Star Wars also, at least 46 episodes, demonstrates the hero's journey to a T, exactly right. And you know, actually, um, when I'm doing links, because that's what being, having an online business is all about links. And so when I'm putting links together to things, which is often, uh, I like to have movies playing all the time, pretty much, even if I've seen them before. And you know what, the uh, the, uh, uh, the other woman was on last night and I'm, she's, Leslie Mann is like so hilarious anyway. But that story, there was kind of a hero's journey in that story as well. And and just friendship, you know, so many great things about friendship in that movie. Um, so how does this work, says April? Get to the point. <laughs> how does this work? And can we make money? And yes and yes. Um, so how this works is you read a screenplay and then you write kind of called coverage, kind of like a book report. And then you give that book report to a producer, writer, director. Um, and then they decide if they want to do the movie based on, well, they don't decide if they want to do the movie typically, but they decide if they want to take the next step, which would be reading the screenplay themselves, meeting with the writer, whatever it might be, depending on who who asked you to read it to begin with, to begin with. So you get paid per project to do that. And then it can lead to all kinds of other things. So if you are brand new, brand spanking new, and you want to learn more, <laughs> sorry, I don't know who that was. If you want to learn more about how to do this, we have our masterclass coming up and we really like talk about breaking it down. And I, I'm much more focused there because I have slides. <laughs> I need a visual, um, but we break it down very, very succinctly in the uh, workshop, which is, we have one tomorrow. Yippee! Tomorrow? Yeah, my days are a little off. T uh, tomorrow at four. Um, 
California time. And then the last one is Saturday morning at 10. So join us and we will really break it down for you. Um, and it does pay. Yes. <laughs> I just don't. I'm like, okay, true story. I was hanging with friends. The person that said this to me is a celebrity. To me is a celebrity. I'm trying to decide, but no, I'm not going to go that. It doesn't matter. So, um, and we're all hanging out, whatever. And I go, okay, I'm going to go now. And they, and he goes, like, are you, are you sure you're okay to drive? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay to drive. Are you sure? And I'm like, I have not had one drop of alcohol tonight, like not one. <laughs> and he was like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> um, so. Yay, from Virginia, can't wait to get started, awesome. Is this going to be recast? So you have six helicopters over your house right now. Okay, so there's a story. So you missed the first few minutes. Goodness, what's going on, April? So start writing, because you've got a story happening right around you. So this right that we're doing now lives in the Facebook group. And you can scroll through, the, actually, a couple things. You can scroll through the Facebook group, <laughs> God bless you. And you can find different to topics and handouts and everything that you can get. And so Doug already posted the link to the handout that goes to today. So you can scroll through. You can go to our YouTube channel because we also put them there. Um, the, the workshops, uh, we're not sure if we'll do a replay. We kind of always just decide based on need. Um, but they're on Thursday and Saturday. So you still have time. Um, it is here in California too, Quebec. <laughs> in Quebec. Um, so hope that makes sense. Yay, you signed up for tomorrow. So um, hang on. how do you get the jobs that pays? And do we take more than one? No, just one masterclass. They're all, they change a little bit because we stay as long as it takes to answer everyone's questions. So the energy and stuff is a little bit different depending on who's there, but the information is the same. So just one is fine, um, Troy. And then we cover that. It's That's a whole nother topic is how to get the jobs. Um, we cover that in the masterclass. And then let's do another, just um, the other thing I was going to say, if you go into the, um, Facebook group search bar and you'd search topics. Some of the Facebook lives that we've done on these topics will pop up and you can kind of watch that. Or if you go over to the YouTube channel, we watch that. We honestly, I mean, I'm going to be perfectly, totally awesome. Thank you. Buddy. There's another emoji for you. I'm a little manic today. Um, we, we don't go, we don't say, well, we do sometimes. So like there's, I saw a producer in here just the other day was like, hey, I need readers. So sometimes people come into this group actually looking for readers. And and there's ways to go out and get jobs. We don't say, hey, call, you know, call my buddy and go ask him for a job because on to be perfectly honest, we don't know your skills. And we want that's one of the reasons we started the whole course thing is so that we can make sure that we bring people up to a level that's smoking so that they can easily get work. So that's kind of the funnel of it. So we'll talk about some ways of networking and finding work and that kind of thing. But we don't, we don't like, we're not a job referral site for one. And then we want to make sure that you're ready. So I hope that makes sense. Hi, Nita. Nice to see you. Very exciting, right? <laughs> Mickey works for lawyers. Okay. So how do you sign up? Um, there's Doug just put a link for you so you can sign up for tomorrow. Woohoo. Yay, Jenny. Um, their master classes are at the time I actually have classes at my college. So are the master's classes. Oh, oh, gotcha, April. Um, well, maybe so then. <laughs> we usually kind of wait to see if there's a um if there's a a lot of requests for the replay. So just you'll get you should be on our email list. Yeah, if you signed up for well, I don't know if you're on our email list or not, but definitely get on there or just follow on the page. We will let you know if there's a replay and give you a link to it if we end up doing that. So Douglas does rock. He does. So <clears throat> when you're looking for, you know, how do you find those stories? How do you find those honest stories? And we feel that one of the ways that you find honest stories is that you learn how to tell honest stories and that you tell honest stories about yourself and your life. And so if I would recommend going back and looking at last week's session where we talked about getting unstuck and we gave you four very tangible ways to kind of get yourself unstuck if you're feeling overwhelmed. Um, we talk a lot about mindset in here. And the reason that we do that is we feel like we want you to be an ultimate clean slate, not bring a lot of your own garbage in. Call a garbage truck, get it out the door before you start reading someone's screenplay. Just saying, because they don't deserve your garbage on their screenplay. So we're trying to figure out ways to help you go, let it go so that you can focus in and be a, the very best possible chance for that writer that you can be. That's your job as the reader. The very best chance for that producer to get an honest take from you. So 
getting unstuck is part of that. And one of the things that we talked about with that is taking stock of your own world and kind of taking stock. If you want to know kind of how you are, what your mindset is, what's going on in your life, like, you know, what you believe, just to look around. If you want to know what you believe about money, look in your bank account. How do you, what do you believe about relationships? Look at your relationships. Like it's pretty laid out for you. It's pretty right there. So <laughs> that, that's the sound effect right there. So <laughs> one of my sister-in-law is always like, you were like a sound of like all I do are sound effects. Okay. So, um, yay, you signed up for the 18th and you have your worksheet ready. Troy is ready. Um, I did. Well, okay. So he said, Oh, you have a hi. Welcome back. We haven't seen you for a while. Well, thank you. I, I colored it darker because I was doing a play. So um, I did a play and she, I was understudying two roles, big roles. And one was German, one was Italian. So it kind of split the difference. So, and it was set in the 2000s. So she wouldn't have purple hair. Anyway, um, is the math, math, you, you should take it again, Elaine. It would be fun. Just do it. Yeah, way back. You should. It is different. Yeah, it would. It would be good. Do it. I am high on life, not alcohol, says Peggy. That's true. Because fire I high and alcohol is different. It's super different. Sorry. I don't know what. That's not how I am when I'm out. I don't even know how I am because I don't bear. Because, you know, I'm one of those people that like, oh, this is going to give me a headache. <laughs> Total Debbie Downer. Um, um, so you should definitely take the workshop. You don't, well, take the workshop though, April, regardless of whether you do the paid course or not, because you will, because what we do in the workshop is we absolutely just succinctly say, you need to know these things. So then you can, you can stay in here. There's all kinds of, and then we go, here's a bunch of ways you can learn those things. We have a paid course. You can learn it there, but we're here all the time and we'll continue to answer your questions. So don't worry about it. If you're, if you're feeling like you can't do it right now financially, don't worry about that. Um, tomorrow's online class is free. It's all free. Yes, it's totally free. Um, we, we do a lot of free stuff and there's a lot of free stuff on our YouTube channel. We do these every single week. And then we also do handouts. We, we try to do a lot of information so that you feel like, you know, we're taking care of you, whether you can do the paid course or not. There's just different ways to go about it. Um, so if you're kind of the things, if you're looking around and taking stock and you're trying to figure out, you know, kind of your story, once you start doing that, then you might, you might be able to take stock in your life and like the six helicopters over your house. You might start being able to find stories that are right around you. And that's what the hand, handout is today is basically how to write what you know. And that is a really good place to start, whether it's set on the moon or set in your backyard, the things that you know can be incorporated into that. And then you'll be, you'll be a good writer, which is an inside joke with screen readers, but you will be a writer that writes well if you're writing what you know. And so we just gave you a couple prompts about, you know, kind of things to look at to kind of get you started. Now, these are also things as a reader, when you're working with a writer that you can suggest to them. So if you're looking at their screenplay and it's missing the sort of honest element, you can say to them, hey, take a look, here's some prompts for you. Here's some things that are missing. It gives you an idea of things that, you know, ways that you can help guide them. And it also gives you an idea of things to look for in a script when you're, when you're just learning how to read. So it kind of will help you in that. Um, totally free, yay. Um, the workshop is exactly like a webinar. <laughs> it's a webinar. That's our fancy name for a webinar. <laughs> You're on it, Melissa. Awesome. Um, so yeah, and then we'll go through, uh, we go through exactly the things that you need to know, which are also the things that we cover in our paid course. So you can kind of compare how you'd like to learn it basically is how it works. And then we tell you all the kind of myths about being a reader. We cover like all the different details about why, you know, if it's a good fit for you. So we have the workshop, you can kind of start to work out, is this actually something I d could do and want to do? So, and then as we talk about storytelling, and th this is actually a good <laughs> segue, as my old boss used to say, I think it's segue. <laughs> He'd go segue and everybody would be like, um, I, hope <laughs> I wonder, no, I was gonna say, I, I wonder how many of those I have. I know I say, my mom, she was an elementary school teacher and she always said words wrong on purpose. So she said like aminal and she thought it was funny. I mean, you know, where I get my wackiness from. Um, but, so I have certain words that I can't say. <laughs> Thanks mom, <laughs> the teacher. There's, what was the one the other day? I was like, I can't say that word. <laughs> You'll hear me do it. I'll do it. I do it usually once, uh, once a session. I just have to get over myself. Um, yeah, all of that's in the workshop for sure. So, so what is your story? So now look around your life. And so as you start to kind of really take a step back, 
And what's your story? Like, if you were to tell your story, what would it be? What's your story? Like, name it. Tell me. Okay, here, here's a quiz. We should do this quiz in general. Um, well, two things. One of the things we just did in Screen Readers that has been so fabulous. You want to know what you're, how you're presenting yourself to the world? Look at your most frequently used emojis. <laughs> totally. It's such insight into who you are and how you respond to things. Because whatever you use frequently, that's just such a reflection of your mindset. So we were having everybody post that. It was so awesome tacos. It was so great because it was so telling and it really does. Um, um, <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> That's awesome. Can't pronounce vegetable. <laughs> she says it. Veg vegetable. <laughs> I love that. I think I like your friend. <laughs> Someone after my own heart. So <clears throat> if you look, you know, if you look at your your story, if you look at your emojis and you look around your life, like what is your story? And another exercise I was going to say that we should do is, okay, so name a movie title that really kind of reflects your story. <laughs> Mine lately has been planes, trains, and automobiles in a major way. But like, what is, you know, what is a, Steel Magnolias would also be good. What is a, um, what is a movie that sort of reflects, uh, so lay them on me. <laughs> okay. What is, what is a movie that kind of, you know, um, the workshop's about an hour hour 15 and then we stay as long as it takes to answer all of your questions. We typically don't go more than an hour and a half as long as I think it's ever gone because there's usually not a lot of questions because we really data dump, data dump. Um, <laughs> I read a thing where a guy used to think that that cats and dogs were the same species but cats were the females and dogs were the boys. <laughs> I just think that's the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, you know, let me, so let's hear some movies. Let's hear some movies that really like, um, define your life <laughs> or like kind of say where, you know, maybe not define your life, but <laughs> let's not be that whatever um, deep, but what are some that sort of like reflect where you're at right now? Um, and so that's kind of the handout will help you kind of define things that you know, will help you guide readers. You know, that's also a good question for a reader. And also, you know, a lot of people use the, you know, my script is this meets that. I'm actually advise against that. There's, a lot of people do it, but there's a lot of producers that really hate it. So you don't, you never know who that, whose hand that script's going to be in. So I just avoid it in general. But um, just so you know, <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, ch chippo tie. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Can I call you Anne? <laughs> Sorry. A moment of silence. Remember Doris Day. Time to rewatch the Glass Bottom Boat. Oh, yes. And let's think about Tim Conway while we're at it. Okay. Um, okay. Now, so we're off on words that we don't say right. Album. <laughs> and yes, and for Tim Conway, thank you. Um, cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> Carries on it. Cheaper by the dozen. I love it. Oh, Chipotle. Chipotle? Is that a movie that's like, oh, you don't know how to say it. Okay. Chip oh, that's like, okay. So I was raised in San Diego. <laughs> Forget it. I'm going off to El Cajon instead of El Cajon and La Jolla. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, coverage, a coverage. Okay, no, it's not quite the same. So, you know, what are what are some of the you know look around at your life, look at the things, and then look at your life and just say, you know, do you like your story? Are you liking the story that you're in right now? Like, is this a story that you, you want to improve? Is this how is the story you in a hero story? Like, what kind of story are you in? Like, what do you what is the story you tell yourself? We are storytellers. Like, you go to your friend, hey, you'll never guess what happened yesterday, and you tell a story. Where you're sitting around, you're at a party, and you're in the kitchen. Don't know why, but we're all in the kitchen telling stories. That's what we do. You're telling, oh, I just met someone. You meet someone, you tell a story. When you break up with someone, you tell a story. You go, okay, can you believe what happened to me the other day? You're telling a story constantly. So what stories do you find yourself telling on the regular? <laughs> are you complaining a lot? Like what are the stories that are constantly coming out of your mouth? And that is an indication of, you know, kind of where you're at. And if you can change that story, then it's kind of like, you know, you will, what is it? <laughs> I'm going to be really profound here and then I can't remember what it is. Um, instead of I'll believe it when I see it, I will see it when I believe it. There it is. That's what I was looking for. Reach it. Um, so there's sound effect. Um, so what is the story that's coming out of your mouth? What is it that, because it's reflecting whatever it is that you believe. Um, Chapoodle? I want some Chapoodle. Paris at midnight. Well, that's quite lovely. <laughs> Back to emojis. <laughs> 
So your go-to emojis, those are good. What does this one mean? What does that one mean? And I, I'm always to my son, what was the one I was, oh, I was constantly using the face because I thought it was really funny. And he was like, mom, that face means like, it's bad. And I was like, no, it means like, <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. And he's like, <laughs> And I was like, well, then the emoji needs a sound effect. And whoever wants to come up with the emoji sound effect app, I think you should. <laughs> Just saying. Um, you're facing age discrimination for jobs. College grab because you're over 50. Ah, pshaw. That's what I say to that. So that's why you need to be a reader because no one knows how old you are. It's all online. And nowadays, there's so many things that are online. There's. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, to pshaw and like minimize at all. Not at all. I understand this. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm 20. But I understand that it's a certain, you know, yeah, it can be that. And so um, college grad, but you are a college grad. Is that what you're saying, Gainer? So some doors can be closed because of that, but other doors can open because you have knowledge that some of your 20-somethings don't quite have. And I've had people in this group, actually, come in and say, first, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. It's not a real thing. That's not a common thing. But then I've had people say, you know, you're leading people down a path. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. And, and I'm fully engaged and invested in this path and helping people in this path. And then, so then when they couldn't kind of, you know, they were kind of trying to knock my credits and just like kind of, you know, I don't know why, but, and then when they couldn't do that, then they said, well, I don't know that you're relevant. Nice. Right. So it, it's everywhere, whatever. And I was like, okay, move along, <laughs> move along, son. So then you find the things that do fit to what your age is. You find a way and you find the things that are, you know, relevant to your years on this planet that make you more knowledgeable about things that other people just don't know just by the nature of having not lived it yet. And though for those of you who say, oh, I'm too young, I'm too young, then you step up and you learn and you and you match, you can read. So well, I'm assuming if you're here because you want to be a reader. So you can, there's so much knowledge at your fingertips now. It's so beautiful, right? People have paved the way for us. So regardless of what your obstacle is or the story you're telling yourself, because that's a story. I'm going to pick on you. Sorry, Gainer. It's a story that you're telling yourself that doors are shutting because of your age. So let's change that story. That's out. <laughs> that, was, that was a magic spell. Thanks for changing your story. Okay, I just dated myself with that reference, but you know, you know, storytelling and music, and music is storytelling, really, um, basic types of human communication, right? So, um, yes, it's absolutely true, and it can be frustrating, absolutely. But stop telling yourself that. Let's stop. We're not going to talk about that anymore. Mm, that story's gone now. We're going to move on to a new story, and that new story is that you have knowledge and you have power as someone who has been on this planet, and you, how are you going to use that? So let's rewrite the story. Perfect. Thank you. You just took us to the next point. So if you have a story that you're telling yourself that's not serving you, because that's not serving you, then let's rewrite that. So how can we re rewrite that story? What are some of the stories that you can say to yourself instead? Like, what are some of the ways that we can flip that story? For one, the amount of opportunity that is available online is astounding. So whether or not you want to be a reader, there are so we are taking these courses, right, to learn how to do online businesses. And then we're kind of funneling everything we learn, right, to you, you would be, your head would pop off, <laughs> like right, right in front of us, Bink! your head would pop off, which reminds me, Doug, the head popped off my pen. <laughs> they gave us pens that had heads on them and the heads were popping up all over. And we were a total metaphor, right? <clears throat> at the amount of different things that people are doing online, the amount of education that people are coming up with online, people are doing stuff for anything that you could possibly think of. So there's so much opportunity there that has no hooper, hit nanny, <laughs> I'm making up words now, that have anything to do, hit nanny, what? <laughs> Google that. Um, that have no, they have nothing to do with how old you are. So there's so much opportunity out there. And everything that we teach you can apply to anything. So like we have someone that teaches chess and he's using this, the, the online skills that we're training to get more chess students. You know, we do trainings in how to do Facebook marketing and Instagram. Like we do social media trainings as well. Like how have we built this Facebook group? You know, we have it's over 8,000 people in here. You know, how do you do that? And so those things can be applied to anything and all of that opportunity does not matter how old you are. Um, Maze runner, <laughs> I love it, mousetrap. <laughs> Yep, I totally get it because I feel like I'm going this way and that way and every other way and I can't make up my mind which way I should go. So breathe. We talked about this. Cindy's a screen reader. Breathe. Just breathe and take tiny little baby steps. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. 
<laughs> love it, love it. Great movie for one thing. Um, totally makes sense. Um, so you're told constantly you need experience. You just want to laugh in their faces, but you don't. So you go home and write about it because I think you're a writer. Getting that vibe. So, so I think I think the more that you change your story, the more that you won't hear that kind of stuff anymore. The more that you decide that it is going to be this, the, the you'll get people like I just talked about the you know person that was telling me I'm not relevant. Whatever I can say relevant. <laughs> Um, whatever you just move on. That's their whatever. They're reflecting back to you more about themselves. Anyone that's you know, comes at you and who's mean, that's that's just about them. Yell rock, yell rock. Yell, wait, wait. Bottoms of college education. Kid death to smear cheek. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Uh, you would lo so love to be a reader. Huge movie buff. Yep, and that's part of it. You gotta love movies, absolutely. Um, so is it Stefan? Is that how you say it or Stefan? Say number one or two. It's disappointing when someone else determines your re relevance. No one can determine your relevance. Now I can't say it. See, see what you did. No one can, de can determine your relevance, but you, you're the only one that can do that. So that's what I'll have to say about that. And I got it out. Um, you just joined. Hi, Matt. We are all well. We are. Hey, tough shoulders. <laughs> Another emoji. <laughs> it's emoji day here in Hollywood Gatekeepers. Um, like they know, says Bonnie. Yep. So Bonnie's been facing the same things, but here it is a new adventure. Love it. Exactly right. On the nose. They don't have that emoji. It took them a long time to get fingers crossed. Um, oh, I didn't know you were late. Shh. I didn't know. I didn't know. She's so late. There's no such thing as late here. Um, yes, absolutely. Barbara Eden, Raquel Welch. They are awesome, right? Right? So Tina Turner, still share, <laughs> right? Whatever, age, whatever. Darn right I do, you're tough, don't give up. Exactly, exactly. And it's, and it's even like, let's change the vernacular of that. So it's even like, yeah, don't give up and just, just write your own story and let it be that. Um, yes, second half productions. No, it's not it, <laughs> second half. Second half studios. <laughs> um, did you see, Hail Caesar, did you say your pet's heads are falling off? What? Pen, pen, it was a pen. Oh, maybe I'll bring it next time. It's so weird that you're mentioning this because I just started using Skillshare. Really helps. What's that, Matt? I don't know Skillshare. Is that an app? So much learning to do, right? And how cool is it that there's so much learning to do, right? And that's the thing that will keep you young. Just keep, keep learning. Like there's, we always go like learning curve because man, this has been a huge learning curve. Just the online, we know reading <laughs> than all the other bells and whistles that have been challenging. So, but the more, and there's so much information and we're so fortunate that we have all these people paving the way, right? That know what they're doing and you just tap in and get, you know, download their brain. Um, I know, you think <laughs> It's like I'm saying we live in the information age or something. What? We are. Our pens were pens were coming off during the conference. Um, <laughs> Friday the 13th, a new beginning. For <laughs> Mickey, by the way, Mickey, in your screenplay. So one of the things that we have in our group is that you can share each other's screenplay. I haven't actually read his screenplay, but coverages are coming in on his screenplay. And that is a stellar twist at the end of your screenplay. Just saying. Really good. Okay. Moving on. Nicely done. Um, Hidden Figures might be my current movie. I'm over 52, over 50 also. And not letting anyone tell me what I am relevant to. You're a late bloomer. You're not late. You're right on time. You're better than them. I will do stuff to myself to heck with their negativity. Right, it's theirs. It's just theirs. And you don't even need to be better than them. You're just you, they're them. Move along, step aside. Now, which was the one that I did number one? Stefan, right? Is that right? <laughs> no, I probably won't remember. I'm just warning you. I'm pretty good with names and faces, but I've not seen people's faces, so it's harder. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Absolutely true. Absolutely. She's a smart woman. Um, we went back and forth with names. That's, we're always naming stuff. Um, Skillshare. Okay, I'll take a look at that. I will take a look at that. You know I will. That might be good for you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
having been following the gatekeeper for two years almost, I have noticed that the networking ability here is definitely the number one benefit of the group. It absolutely, absolutely is. And I don't see Anson. Where's Anson? Oh, there's 42 comments. What? Um, yeah. Yeah. And we also have things on how to use this group. Um, service with online courses, not promoting, but they gave out two months free trial to hand out. I've been using it to draw. Cool. Thought it was relevant to mention since we're talking about learning. It's absolutely relevant. Relevant seems to be the word of the day. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes, Stefan. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Who are your admins? What are their experiences in this adventure? Um, hey, admin. Yes. <laughs> hey, can, admin, get over here. Hello. Can I help you? <laughs> Just lay it. Stefan, thank you for the... What do you call that? <laughs> For the, what do you call that? <laughs> Good Lord. Yes, I am the admin. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're still working on that. Uh, we're getting there. Um, yeah, and I have, we have a wide, because I feel like in building this that we wanted to know what we were doing and then start bringing people in so that we knew what was going on because sometimes in the online space, your business can run off without you. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure that we understood what you needed what you were wanting so we could build, build, build. And then as we build and grow, um, we brought in Shree. And so she's an admin as well now. So we're just, you know, starting to kind of build and bring other people on. But yeah, no, it's just us right now. So we are learning. Oh, you have an emoji of yourself. I love that. I haven't learned how to do that yet. Um, you can't find the link for the handout. Can you post that again, please, Doug? <laughs> love you, I got you, girl. <laughs> emoji gif. Oh, thank you. You're on it. That's how you find those little Guys, I see people do it all the time. Um, here is the, awesome, thank you, Matt. Here's the link for Skillshare if you'd like to view after the live stream, of course, no squirreling. Awesome, and there's the giveaway. So, um, and when you look in that page, when you get to that page, so you'll often, you'll get to a page, there's a bunch of giveaways on there that are all about writing. So feel free to download, get your download on. And they also, in case you just haven't had enough, <laughs> they connect to the video on YouTube that goes with the handout. We're just so fancy. And that's my world of links. <laughs> and so hopefully all the links work. Um, but also, what is the topic today? By the way, <laughs> it is writing your story is the topic today. <laughs> we have, it should be relevance because that's what it ended up being. Um, yes, they are precisely doing what they're meant to do when they're meant to do it. <laughs> breathe. <laughs> Would you breathe? Thank you. Appreciate that. So we do a podcast and I edited the first podcast and I edited out every single breath. <laughs> Doug was like, no, no, no. I don't know, but I don't like hearing myself breathe. He's like, no, you need to breathe. <laughs> breathe, child. <laughs> okay, so if you don't like your story, let's rewrite it. We'll rewrite it with you. We will, we're gonna call you out just like we did and you were a really good sport about it there. Um, uh, we will definitely call people out. So. Thanks for being such a good sport and being a, a little getting pig for us because we do want you to change it. If you're not liking the story, you're not liking what people are telling you, let's change that and make it a little bit different because when you do that and you take that breath and you, you, your story, you're cool with your story, you're going to be so much better for the people that you are helping and you're going to be so much better. And we're having, people are starting to form their little production companies. It's been like, it's not little, I don't mean to downplay it. It's spectacular. Um, and so things are happening. Businesses are building Producers are starting to come in here looking for screen re screen readers. It's been, this is the next. So that's the next step for us. We wanted to make sure that everything works. And now it's, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's announcing from the rooftops that we're here. Um, <laughs> thanks, Alan. Will Douglas ever appear on screen? No, he's Charlie, man. He's Charlie. And I'm like, freeze. <laughs> that's my angel's impersonation. <laughs> Woo. Oh, topic. Oh, wait, we're supposed to have a topic. He is the neighbor from Home Improvement. Uh, <laughs> um, very doubtful, Alan. Very doubtful. We show his chair sometimes. <laughs> um, you had to rewrite a script I wrote two years ago. It was perfect then. What happened? <laughs> what happened? It was perfect last time I read it. Now I have a script where the big, um, the big magic tool is a cassette player. <laughs> it's a little dated. Uh, yeah, we've tried to see him for years. So, and it is true, Stefan's been in this group for a while. We are just coming up, June will be our two year anniversary of starting this whole crazy ride. And it's just been, and we're having so much fun and it's just growing like crazy. I'm having so, too much fun. Covering your two guinea pig ears after that comment. 
<laughs> What's the guinea pig ear look like? <laughs> it's a little thing. <laughs> But Gaynor, you have been a great sport about it. I really appreciate you kind of saying what your struggle is because I'm sure there's others that, you know, Bonnie kind of mentioned that she kind of had the same thing. So when you step up like that, it really helps us help everyone. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about with cassette players and Barbara Eden. Um, there's a book I would like to write the screenplay for. I feel it's a viewpoint that needs to be out there, but I don't want to con contact the right author so she wouldn't do it but I don't want to contact the author so she wouldn't do it herself. Is that the wrong way to go about it? Um, so you're, you're basically saying that you're afraid that you'll give her the idea. Uh, I guarantee it that if she, if she's had that idea, I pretty much can guarantee that whether or not she feels capable of doing that is a whole nother story, but I guarantee it. If she's written a book, she's a writer and she's thinking about other mediums or if someone else has mentioned it to her already. So don't worry about that. Go ahead, contact her say that you're inspired by her. Is it a her? I think you said she, right? Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> script lost rele relevance. His script lost whose? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Well, I don't know if it ever, you know, the relevance has to do with the human condition more than I can change the cassette tape. The story is still relevant, if that makes sense. Um, that's just logistics. Um, you will have permission in order to do anything. Yeah, you'll have to have her permission for sure. But I think it's more that you're afraid that you're going to give her the idea. That's what I'm guessing from that. And I would say, don't worry about that. You're kind of making an obstacle for yourself that you don't need to have. Um, most more than likely, if she's a writer and she's published, um, but she's basically a young adult author still. If she's a published writer, someone's already talking about that because that's kind of, especially when you get published, that's one of the conversations that a lot of people have when they're published is just kind of other mediums. Um, I would say the best thing is, so if she's a young adult author, my kind of advice to you would be to find out where, where she hanging. Does she have an Instagram page? Does she have a, does she have any social media that you can start to kind of converse with her just in general about the topic, kind of let her get to know you a little bit. If you just hit her up out of the blue, Hey, I want to write your screenplay of your book. Um, I don't know that you would get very far, but get to know her a little bit, see what her, see. And, and we talk about this in networking and in the jobs thing you mentioned earlier is kind of, I don't know, to turn things on their head is that anytime that you're asking or trying to figure out work, and we talked this, um, uh, Barb, look for the, oh, you know what? I think we took it down because we had trolls. But I think we mentioned it again a couple of months ago. Someone was asking, they had the opportunity to work with someone and they were asking like, how do they go about it? And so we talked about networking, but I'll just kind of summarize it in a nutshell here. But talking about rather than saying, I want to do this and this and this, find out what is it, what are her pain points? Like you find out if you want to work with a certain producer, you don't just go, hey, I'm so great. Look at my resume and look at all the things I do. You say to them, hey, I noticed on this last film, you know, whatever, uh, like this last movie was so inspiring to me that I created this whatever Facebook post or something, you know, like I noticed that you don't have an Instagram account attached to your book. Would you like me to handle that for you? You know, you start become a value to someone before you, then you'll show them how great you are without having to show them how great you are, without having to toot your own horn and show them your resume or anything. Like that. Just start figuring out ways that you can provide value for that person. Um, Evan Pagan, who's I'm a geeky fan of, he's a marketer. <laughs> yeah, I, were, I know, James Cameron, whatever, Evan Bacon. Um, But he talks about how people have worked with these you know, serious marketers by going to their conferences and taking notes and then taking those notes and putting them in some kind of format and then emailing those notes to that person saying, hey, I thought you might want to use this for a handout, you know, providing some value. And if you ever need someone to do whatever, I'm your person. And people have gotten jobs that way to where you're figuring out what is some value you can provide for them as opposed to, you know, what can I, you know, it sounds like you're engaged in their topic. I don't know why. So maybe that's the why that you're getting across is why you're engaged in that topic. Does that make sense? I hope that I'm making sense. Um, it's unlikely that she writes scripts unless she specifically writes scripts. That's right. It is unlikely. And most people get someone else, even if they're big famous book writers, it's a different medium. Um, so Tyron, about 20 pages till I'm done with your second script. It will need readers. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, you're in the right place there. Ty Tyron? Tyrone? I think there's an E on the end if it were Tyrone. Um, oh, okay. So so they're an award-winning writer. So yeah, but still, doesn't matter. All the same. Doesn't matter. Um, so S Stefan has some comments. I'm um, Anne-Marie. Do it all on storyboards and talk the author into 
reproduction is a comic book purse. That's an interesting idea. See, look at that. See, now we're saying it took some effort, but it's getting easier. The more you do it, it's just like anything driving a car. It's like anything, the more you do it. So all you people that are like, we were, Doug and I, we were in an Uber and the guy was like, well, he'd written one book already. And it was written a book of short stories. He's an Uber driver. And he's like, oh, I'm working on my second book. And, and we were like, oh, you should do a book on short stories of Uber. I'm sure you've had, and they started telling us all these Uber stories. Oh yeah, I've had this Uber story and that Uber story. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you haven't told them. What a great book for short stories. And he's like, no, I'm going to do, so I forget even what it was. <laughs> That's how inspiring it was. And then he's like, but I can't, you know, I can't, I got to get into my cabin and I'm not a hermit. And like, was, he had all these obstacles about why he can't write. And it was all about how he had to shut himself in and take, and so many people go, oh, I need to go away and write my book and have some scotch. That's right. Just write every day. Gets easier. Gets easier. Right? Right? I wrong? You need some phonetically. <laughs> If you ever try to remember something, just talk about something else for a minute. That's what I meant. Spell it phonetically. That was the word I was looking for when you spelled Stefan so beautifully. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that right here. It's happening in front of our eyes. <laughs> Stefan, we'll read your script. Awesome. Um, so Cindy says, you gave me an idea that I should try to contact Stephen King. No, wait a minute. We need to talk about that and see if he'll let me do the screenplay for the book I wanted to write a screenplay on. No, you had asked if you could do it, but first Stephen's. King and we had told you, wait, 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 no, Stephen King does write his own screenplays or collaborates with people to write his own screenplays. What you should do, Cindy, because I know that your genre is is find an author who's un, unpublished or who's not Stephen King, who's on that same, who writes horror films, but not on the level of Stephen King, because you'll have a really hard time with that, Cindy. Um, testify, Doug. It's better to collect business cards rather than giving away business cards. Absolutely. He's so smart. Um, Yay, I love looking, look, look at that. Awesome. You said when you got to type the last act, I write on legal pans and then type. I love it, you're old school. <laughs> Doug's like, what? Um, remembering, being remembered, exactly. Um, a bit rambling now. <laughs> Are you a director? He's gonna keep me on track. He's gonna keep me on track. Um, rhymes with Byron. Byron, got it, thank you. That was a perfect way to do it. Um, so Doug, Doug's saying that buddy of his gets all of his books optioned, but he doesn't write the scripts. And Marie, I have a friend from high school, 18 years ago, he's writing a book and we all knew the stories. And one day we actually videotaped movie previews to come before his book, movie of the book. I love it. It was hilarious and this book wasn't finished till five years later. That's awesome. What a great story. That's a story in and of itself, right? Um, that's actually really interesting. So they basically purchased the structure premise. So boy, there's, we'll do another. Well, actually, if you type in adaptations, we do a couple of Facebook lives about that. Um, once you have a comic book, it makes a great handout to pitch the screenplay, depending on the screenplay. Sometimes comics aren't like, don't do some, some screenplays don't adapt well into comics, but it's definitely, definitely a great idea of a way you can go. You have so many books on movies and screenwriting. I don't know why I keep talking myself. No, I don't, I don't know why either. So that's why you're here. Cause we're going to talk you into doing it. Um, you just keep talking to yourself out of starting things off. Just get, just write, write, take the handout today and write that. Do that handout, literally sit down and write every answer to every question on the handout today, okay? Come back next week and you tell us what you got. <gasps> as far as you know, he has not done a screenplay of this book and it's a fairly older book. That's why I thought I, you would want to do that, but maybe you won't. I don't want to discourage you ever. I will never discourage anyone to just go for it. Um, now I see Byron when I see your name. <laughs> That's what happens. My people just bleed it out, Anne Marie. <laughs> that's our new. That's our new T-shirt. Just bleed it out. You guys are so awesome. This has been great. Um, we try to keep these to twenty minutes, <clears throat> partly because I've been, but mostly because you guys have been asked. You know, making some super smart comments. So, Anne Marie, I expect you to do that handout, and I want to hear next week like what you came up with, like embarrassing stories. I know you got one. Start there. So. Um, the handout, Doug, can you post that link again to the handout? So, and then look on that page because on that page, there's more handouts about writing. So you can take any, and any of you said you've written it, but you've read a bunch of books. Let's go, it's time to go. We're going, we're on it, we're doing it, let's do it. So this week, enrollment is open. Um, yay, the best people on earth. Um, I want to say comics don't necessarily go with screenplays, but what helps is proof of concept. Absolutely. Really great. 
point. Now, illustrations or paintings help, but also could be a waste of money. If the script is poop, they won't bite. <laughs> Until it's not poop anymore. You promised, she promised. Everybody heard her here, she promised. I know, it's nice to have you here on your first time here. She promised, we heard a promise. We got a promise out of her. Writing is easy, you open a vein and bleed on the paper. <laughs> That's great, Robert, just smart guy. Um, 20. I actually love the writing for emotional impact book. That is a good one. It is a very good one. Um, and also um, the emotional toolbox is another good one. And Mushi, like Mushi's one of those people when she decides to do something, it's done. <laughs> Consider it done. Punching up my active and alive words, thanks to it. Love it, love it. There's the handout link. So once you're done and have a decent draft, what would be the best advice? You know what? <laughs> How much time you got? Um, let's do that. I will, we will do that. Let's see. Let's do that next week. Come back next week and we will talk about once your screenplay's done, then what do you do? Um, there's some really relevant contests, relevance the word of the day, um, that also kind of help give you feedback and whatnot. So that's, hi Kendra, that's a good place to start as well. Um, but we'll, we can kind of cover that. Um, <laughs> okay, that's a new, I have to like, there's a, there's a bright light in here, don't know why, so you can see me. Louis Mar, is that right? Ah. That's very easy. I am, need to breathe a breath of fresh air. Thank you. Um, OCD. <laughs> no, I don't call it OCD. Nah, OCD is not a word for you. <laughs> she just does it. She said, speed of implementation. Another thing Evan Pagan teaches, you get on it, right? And Marie, we're gonna get on it. Speed of implementation. That, that is like one of the things that they say is the difference between people that have big success and people that don't is they just do it. They just speed them. <laughs> we were like, maybe we should teach people how to read. Okay, how did, let's put up the wizard. <laughs> before we even really like whoa yeah so and it's been awesome super awesome you guys are great and we're having so much fun and so we have um, live workshops tomorrow and then we're going to come back and do a facebook live on friday um just sort of answering questions about the live workshop saturday we have the live workshop again and then sunday is a wrap party so sunday we'll have another facebook live we're going to give you a little behind the scenes tour um to actually see inside the course and so you guys can kind of know everything you need to know about it. And then, you know, we'll see you in here or in the course or wherever works for you. Um, you signed up for the 2019 planner the other day, but the link that came was not good. Yes, we will actually, we're going to be sending out a planner uh, Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> who's in Weimar? What? What? I did not understand that question. Um, me too with the planner. Yeah, so keep an eye out for the planner that is coming. And then we start June, new June. Anybody been here over a year? New June, here it comes. Because we believe, we do not believe really in New Year's resolutions. So we have a whole happy half new year to get you back on track again from all those New Year's resolutions that you kind of forgot about. So we'll, be, so we'll definitely be having a planner that goes with that. Um, so I will be live, live in the masterclass. I don't know where that accent came from. I think that means it's time to go. It's time for me to go. When I start doing accents, we, we, we are full. <laughs> the tank's like, Rrr. all right, you guys, you guys have been so great. This is so much fun. And honestly, um, <laughs> you thought you heard me say Weimar. <laughs> the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. I think I need to enunciate a little bit more. If I could see on the right opportunity. <laughs> It's one of the warm ups. Sorry. Um, do we do Zoom? Um, Zoom next. No, that's on Thursdays now. We haven't been for a while. That's tomorrow. Um, tomorrow at six. Uh, awesome. Yeah, you guys are great. And <clears throat> you guys, I mean, I've had kind of a rough week, to be honest. And you guys, like, you just make me happy. And it's super exciting. And hasta la pasta. <laughs> See you tamale. <laughs> We will be back for the masterclass tomorrow live. Hope to see you there. And if not, we'll be here again on Friday. Um, thank you for accepting us. We really, really appreciate it, Anne-Marie. And we'll look forward to seeing what you came up with for next week. Um, um, can't wait for tomorrow. Awesome. You guys are the greatest. And we will see you, if not this week, on all the workshops and whatnot. Then we'll be back here on Wednesday to talk about, <laughs> what did I say we were going to do? Oh, what you do with your script when it's done. <laughs> I do that all the time. Let's talk about that next week. Anyway. All right, you guys, we will see you next week. You guys are awesome. Super happy. Yay. And now we say goodbye on YouTube. <laughs>